So let's do yet again another Transformer Slag Podcast Patreon listener question. Once again, if you want to be part of the Transformer Slag Podcast Patreon, help support the podcast. Let us know we're doing a half decent job here in the Transformer world, keeping you educated, entertained, and informed in our beautiful hobby of the robots in disguise. Patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pin comment or the description below. What does it get you if you join the Patreon? Get to your name in the end credit scroll at the end of every segment. Access to our exclusive Discord where we share lore, share sales, share deals, share our ideas, but most importantly, save money on your hobby. When you're part of the Discord, we share all the deals that are happening in the Transformer world so you could save money and not have to pay full price on your robots. And depending on what tier you are in the Patreon, you might get a little something something in the mail, a little gift, a little uh, access to our giveaways that we do every so often or or you might even get access to our patreon listener question get to ask one and we have one today from longtime patron jesus prime and jesus prime wants to know hey there proto man first i'd like to say thank you for answering my question on the transformer slag live stream that was really awesome i have a patreon listener question for you and it has to do with the transformers sword lore related question when i was a kid the most powerful transformer sword was the armada star saber made out of a bunch of minicons and i loved it and then we were told that prima of the original 13 also had a sword called the star saber the most powerful transformer relic that had the matrix in its hilt after that we were introduced to the sword of primus and then after that the matrix saber which transforms into a matrix of leadership with these weapons, the Armada Star Saber doesn't appear to be that special anymore. So my question is, how can these different yet very similar swords coexist in the franchise? Or is there something to be considered that they are multi-universal variants of each other? Thank you for sharing your Transformer knowledge with all of us, Jesus Prime. Well, thank you for the question, Jesus Prime, and the kind words, and coming by the live stream on Saturday night and asking a super chat question. Well, the uh, the sword question, the thing is, is that all of those swords that you listed really, while they are swords, they're similar in that sense, they have very different origins, very different purposes. I mean, and not to mention the whole trademarking of it. The first time we got the Star Saber trademark in the West, I mean, obviously... There's the Star Saber character from Japanese G1, Master Force, and Victor, excuse me, Victory, and everything that goes on with that. But we have the Star Saber here in Armada, and it was also called the Star Saber on the Japanese side in Micron, and that was a Unicronian creation. It was created by Unicron, made out of three Minicons, and it was used to stoke the flames of war among the Autobots and Decepticons and to create that negative energy to revive Unicron. And the only thing that could stop the Star Saber is something that's also Unicronian, which was the Sky Boom Shield. It would kind of negate the energy of that. So it's a Unicronian creation used to create trouble, pretty much. And it was made out of three Minicons. So there's that Star Saber. Then you mentioned um, the, so uh, the Sword of Prima, the Star Saber from that. That's a funky one because the original 13 was an idea that's existed since the 80s. It's been around for a while. Simon Furman idea of the original 13 Transformers, the original 13 Primes, and that was that. And then in Bacon 2011, there was a lore panel that Aaron Archer and a few of the other Hasbro uh, staff members were talking about. And they revealed the Transformers Vault book that was going to be released in 2011. And they showed a piece of art by Ken Christensen, and it showed Prima holding what Aaron Archer called the Star Saber, and it had the Matrix hilt in there. And that was the first time we saw that piece of art was in the Transformers vault. And that created this whole thing where it's like, oh, the original 13, and they, they're all primes, and they're all massive, and they all have relics or powerful items. And that, of course, would be fleshed out even more with the Covenant of Primus, a book that would come afterwards. And that uh, that sword itself was called the Star Saber, and I think it was more so f to placate from a uh, 
a trademark standpoint. I think maybe at some point they were thinking of maybe we'll make a toy of the Star Saber and we got to keep that trademark anyway. So it'll protect it if we want to use it for the Victory character. It protects it if we want to use it again for the Armada character and trademark or for this new version here. But ultimately in the end, none of it really got used. The closest thing we have to a uh, Prima's uh, Star Saber sword with the Matrix in the hilt is there was a third party company called Dr. Wu that did one. And it's a very nice one, by uh, by the way. And uh, if you want to have a nice Prima figure to go with it, the best version that you could get officially anyhow uh, is the Transformers Mission to Cybertron Premier Edition 2017 Optimus Prime 2-pack, which comes with Protoform Optimus Prime looking very ancient Cybertronian and Prima looking in that one. You put the Matrix hilts in his hand and you're off to the races. But yeah, so that 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 Matrix sword there that one that one is kind of like the original star saber in a lot of ways and it's where the original matrix of leadership first was held not in the chest of a robot and they kind of fleshed out the story of it a little bit more there was a there was a novel called uh, transformers exiles that was done by alex irvine and he kind of like fleshed it out a little bit more and it was it, it's kind of dubious that that book because like they talked about how the Star Saber and that got broken into a whole bunch of separate robots. Again, kind of channeling that old Transformers Armada idea, where it's like, oh, it's gonna, tr it, it's separated into the five separate robots now, and it was Clocker, uh, Mainspring, Chain Drive, Pinion, and Cannon Spring, and it, none of these, none of this ever led to anything really. But it was kind of like a, something that was mentioned in the book, and not a lot of people really pay attention to it, but. Again, that was the aligned continuity and what was going on with that and all that silliness. Then there's the uh, the Matrix Saber that you mentioned. And that was a toy that was in the Arms Micron line, the Japanese Transformers Prime subline. And it came with Arms Master Optimus Prime. And it was just a toy only kind of idea. Hey, how about this sword that transforms into a giant matrix? Wouldn't that be cool? Just a toy only concept, almost a gimmick. Of course, Sakamoto, the legend that he is, took that, retconned the idea, and used that, just that weapon and stuff to be part of the white order of the different colors of the Primus Vanguard. And it's like, oh, hey, the Primus Vanguard, like this is how their matrix looks. You know, he had a lot of different ideas with that. So that one also, it's kind of its own thing. It's the matrix of a different continuity of a different world. So also kind of a different thing there. And it just happens to turn into a sword. And then you mentioned the sword of Primus. The sword of Primus really is just this one kind of thing that existed in the Transformers generation, uh, regeneration books by Simon Furman. Great books, by the way. And it's just this sword that Primus created as kind of a fail safe to be used to kind of stop the, the, the demons that he created, the primordial demons, uh, some of his early experiments and creations. And it was wielded by Rodimus Prime. It has the power to open and close zero space, which makes it ridiculously broken because if it could do that on its own, that alone makes it ridiculously overpowered because opening zero space sends you pretty much into nothingness and kills people instantly, or you could pull people from other timelines. It's, that makes it ridiculously broken, the Sword of Primus. Uh, it did have a toy version. Uh, it came with the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Commander Class Rodimus. Uh, again, has no relation really to the kingdom fiction or anything. It's just, hey, why don't we include the Sword of Primus with this you know, gigantic figure that we made? So it has that kind of thing. If you want to learn more about that one, I suggest reading the Transformers Regeneration books by Simon Furman. A nice little short run of 20 issues or so. So good stuff. But like I said, they all fall from different universes and timelines. That's how they're able to kind of coexist. The Star Saber from Armada is part of that Unicron trilogy and is really just that. Uh, pretty much doesn't exist outside of that. After Energon and, and Cybertron, it really doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the Prima Star Saber, that's a Transformers Prime aligned continuity kind of thing. With obviously it, the, uh, the, the general idea of it being sprinkled here and there in the IDW comics and everything like that. So, but it, you know, it kind of is really relegated to the prime and aligned continuity. Then you got the the Matrix Saber, which because of Sakamoto has been retconned into the Legends universe, which is that its own co continuity in itself. And then the Sword of Primus, which while it exists in a kingdom toy, really is just 
relegated to the Marvel comic books continuity, more specifically the retcon Marvel comics continuity of the regeneration books, pretty much retconning G2's uh, Marvel books by Simon Furman. So they could all exist because they're all from different worlds, all different universes. Which is the most powerful? Eh, you know, maybe the Sword of Primus, just because of how it solves any problem that needs to be done. Um, I mean, they all kind of serve different purposes, so it's kind of hard to say which one is more powerful than the other. The Star Saber in Armada was kind of swung around as just a really powerful weapon among the Autobots and the Decepticon. Decepticons used more just to kind of create trouble, more so than to uh, to end a war, if anything. I think like something like the Requiem Blaster almost seems like even more broken and powerful of the uh, three original Unicronian Minicon weapons. The Prima Star Saber, from what we've seen in Transformers Prime and and what we've read about it, it again another really powerful weapon, but something that's just more a brute force really powerful weapon. And the Matrix uh, Saber was something that Sakamoto's focused more on being a Matrix less than a Saber, so we never really saw much out of that. So I'd have to go with the Sword of Primus, unfortunately, because that zero space cut in technology is just too much. So I hope that kind of answers that. I mean, they're, they're four very different swords with four very different purposes. It's kind of like, you know, tanks or guns or anything like that. They all serve, you know, a chain gun serves a very different purpose from a shotgun that serves a very different purpose from a rail gun or a sniper gun. They're all guns. Some could say some are better than others, but they all serve very different purposes. And it's kind of the same thing with these swords. They're all, they all serve very different purposes, have very different origins from very different continuities. And I mean, there's a ton of other swords. Hey, let's talk about Star Saber's sword himself, the Saber Blade. That's a really awesome sword too, you know? Went right through the chest of Desaurus, you know? So it's like there's so many uh, cool weapons in Transformers. But I hope that answers that a little bit. Gave you a little bit of sword knowledge. What's your favorite sword in Transformers? Maybe something that just comes with a figure, perhaps. Do you like maybe those Energon swords that came with uh, some of those Energon figures? Like the big orange Energon sword that came with Cruel Lock, let's say, or something. Or Doom Lock. I think it was Cruel Lock. But uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. And uh, again, thank you for the listener question and being part of the Patreon, Jesus Prime. And if you want to be like Jesus Prime and be part of the Transformers Lag Podcast Patreon, patreon.com forward slash protoman, or check the pinned comment or the description below. And like I always say, rock out with the robots in disguise, and I'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs>